Uh, Caleb says, hey, Brian, just wanted to ask if you knew any good rack companies for baby colubrids. Rack? Yeah, yeah, like uh, I guess like colubrid rack. So, you know, I really, if you want to go with like an ABS plastic rack, which I think is the best for baby colubrids because, you know, there's really not a steel option that makes sense at all, uh, I would look at Reptile Basics. Okay? okay, Reptile Basics has a really great rack system. As a matter of fact, why don't we punch that up real quick? Yeah, just you got Reptile it. Basics and go to the rack systems. They, you know, it's CNC, a very rich is is a super innovative guy. Um, I was out there in in, in the Carolinas uh, last year, visited his place, was highly impressed not only with his place, but you know, I've always liked Rich. I mean, he's a really good dude, man. And and uh, but his rack systems, you can see right here, are, are right just here? yeah, they're beautiful. I mean, they're really good. they are really and, nice. And there's some small. He had a small clue. Now, I don't know if it's there. If, if he doesn't have it there, send him an email because he sent me a, uh, 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 or he showed me a small colubrid rack. Yeah, you can go to his contact, go to contact page. page contact and he saw, page. showed me a small baby colubrid rack that was dope as could be that he had been working on. Now, I don't know if he's commercially selling it yet, but I know he had had them there. I looked at him. I literally was looking at him and thinking, man, this might be good for me in the future. Um, so that's, I mean, I, I'm not saying there's not other good racks. I'm saying the thought that went into these racks, the way they're heated, the way they are, it's, it's he's pretty, a smart dude. Yeah. yeah for sure. Good, 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 good dude. So check out reptile basics. Um, I think it's Ak Akubra, Akubra, Joe. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, Joe hey, says, Joe. uh, just dropping some happy new year wishes to the both of you, Brian and Jay tips on raising up my first Varanus. Uh, First off, thank you. Happy yeah, New thank Year. thank you. Happy New Year, uh, brother. It, you know, it depends what type of veranda it is. You know, I mean, there's, you know, Ackies are very different than, you know, lace monitors. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, they they all really, really require different care, uh, different heat. If you put you know, if you put what kind it is down in the comments below, yeah, I'll try yeah, to look yeah. for it for you. Yeah, Just yeah, yeah. tag at checking in and I'll yeah, find but, it. But I will say you will love your verandids. I mean, they are uh, my favorite some animal, of the, some of the coolest animals on the planet. And, and so whatever it is. But, yeah, I'm always happy to help out. Uh, Mr. Simple Man says, uh, how is RJ doing? RJ's doing really good, as a matter of fact. Uh, uh, we are working with him, and the idea behind RJ, uh, I've mentioned it, is that 3.0, the expansion, will we're going to allow people to feed much like Gatorland does, right? You know, so Gatorland, <laughs> it's going to be different because obviously they it's have be so marsh dope, and stuff. But, you know, they call their alligators up, and then, you know, you can get, you know, a foot and a half away from these giant alligators and throw food into their mouth. Um, we want the exact same experience here at the Reptarium where we'll be able to call RJ over. He'll open his mouth. You won't have to hand him anything because obviously that can be very dangerous. Yeah. And and up until now, that was how I always fed him, but just by handing it to him. Um, but I can't let people do that. You know, that'd be very, very dangerous. Someone's going to lose an arm <laughs> that way. Um, and I, I always say, I'm, I'm always shy. I was just talking to not this Jay, our other Jay, uh, Jay Tingle, um, uh, today about how, you know, as a reptile guy or maybe even an animal guy, you expect people to have Aptitude. similar, <laughs> similar, uh, you know, yeah, uh, you know, kind of weariness uh, towards like the yeah. face of an animal. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. And, and I was feeding alligators today, little alligator, tiny ones, you know, three, five month olds, four month olds, whatever. And, uh, and I'm always so surprised at how like, like people don't get it. Number one, they'll put their, they're, as they're like with these tongs, handing an alligator a food with the other alligator an inch away from their hand. You know what I mean? Like they'll just like put their hand right to the things, like like reach over an alligator <laughs> to feed another one, and this one's ready to bite them. Or the other thing is, is that they'll like put the food, you know, like six inches away from the animal, thinking the animal is going to somehow come jump Leap for it or jump, something. Yeah. Like put it in its mouth. It's it's <laughs> sitting there with its mouth open. Put it in its freaking mouth. And so that happens all the time. And it, and it just and it just happened. It surprises but, you, know, you though, right? Because like I'm does. not I'm not like a pro animal handler at all. But like I do get what you're saying. Like you should have some type of aptitude. You have a dog. You wouldn't yeah, do just, that to a dog. Just a know? little intuition. Like yeah. okay, you know, <laughs> it's crazy. But uh, uh, so I'm always surprised. So I have to take that into account with RJ, right? I can't let somebody accidentally think they, you know, stick their hand in his mouth. So, so I've got to always make sure that they're going to be a foot, foot and a half away and throw food into its mouth. So we're training him now to, to do that, to come over and just open his mouth and me throw the food in. But I've been feeding him for 10 years by hand, so it's going to take a little while. But he's doing really, really well, and, and, and he has kind of gotten it. You know, he's going to get better. I, yeah, for sure. And uh, so that will be something that will happen at, at Reptarium. Um, 
Trey Point uh, Trey Point O. Yeah, that's what we're calling it now. Yes, Trey. Max Point in the building. Mac, what's up, man? We love you, brother. This, yeah, he said uh, this year brought the most brutal manifestation of my anxiety disorder, but mm. the work all of you do in this awesome chat community helps me immensely. Well, Mac, I appreciate love you, you man. man. Love you, and uh, st- obviously, I know you'll stick around. He's one of our mods, and he's yeah. always here, and, and we appreciate you so so much because I know More you put you a know, lot man. of your time uh, into this, and we appreciate you guys. Uh, but. Uh, um, stick around because I'm going to talk about anxiety. I'm going to talk about some things, and I'm sorry that you dealt with a lot of it, but I'm going to give you some ideas of how I dealt with it and how uh, I've been conquering it and will eventually completely conquer it and put it behind me for the rest of my life. Um, and I want to talk deeply about that, but that'll be later on in the podcast. Uh, Demonic Reptiles says, uh, huge fan, Ooh. any chance Angolian pythons will be added to the reptarium? Yeah. Weird yeah. question, how to handle the body of a large constrictor that dies? Okay, first part. Yeah, I, absolutely. By the way, <laughs> demonic reptiles is awesome. I love that. Dude. Um, so uh, yes, Angolans are a must. I mean, I used to have Angolans years ago. Uh, definitely want to get back into them. I mean, some of the most incredible. And you know, if you love ball pythons, you're going to love Angolan pythons. I mean, obviously they're they're like a cross between like a a, a carpet python and a, and, 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 and a, a ball, ball python. python. Wow, almost. like almost identically. That, that yeah, almost would be like perfect. a bre- almost like a brettles, you know, crossed with a ball, a, a ball python, and they're very <laughs> interesting. They have this kind of beaded skin, much like rough scale samboas. Um, mm. They uh, they do get larger than a ball python, but they do not ball up. They don't ball up like a ball python. Uh, they they can sometimes be a little bit snippy, but okay. but I mean they'll defend themselves by biting, not by hiding. Um, but but they also can be very very docile, very cool animals. Like I said, work with them a number of occasions, uh, and and so I I want more Angolan pythons for sure. And it's uh, you, you can guarantee you there will be Angolan pythons in the reptarium. Uh, I, I would say sooner than later, to be honest with you. And then lastly, how do you, you know, listen, you could do a couple things, you know, you could do with, with if, a, if a large constrictor passes away and we've had them obviously over 30 something years, you know, we've had animals die from all kinds of reasons, you know, even, you know, especially, um, you know, very similar to what's happening with, with, what has happened with ball pythons and green tree pythons with nidovirus, uh, Burmese pythons had nidovirus years ago. Of course, we didn't know of nidovirus at the time. And, and some people used to call it mycoplasm and stuff like that, but mm. nevertheless, I'm sure I'm guarantee you is, is nido. And it wiped out probably 80% of the collections in the country of, of Burmese wow, that's pythons. So crazy. It was crazy. I mean, literally 80% of the Burmese in the country probably died from nidovirus, uh, 15 years ago, including almost all of ours. Um, and that's the reason why we now have four Bur- five Burmese pythons total, and we won't bring any in unless they're tested with NIDO because because we we don't I mean we love our Burmese pythons and For sure. once they have them they're, they're, you can't just can't save them so we've lost big giant snakes and and we've also lost giant snakes to old age you know we. We, we just talked about African rock pythons, you know. Well, that's actually coming up in a vlog here in the next yeah, couple yeah, of yeah. days. Uh, you know, I had one that died after 22 years. She was 18 foot. So you could do one of two things. You can bury it. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know what the law is against that, but... Uh, I feel like you, it's okay. I, I, it's your I yard. It's yeah, you got to do. do with that. Uh, you know, some people actually send them out to get, uh, you know, the bones uh, made into what? a cool, cool, you know, kind of... Rearticulated you know, yeah, and right. stuff like that. Yeah. Sometimes even uh, you know stuffed and so on like that. Um, uh, or, or the you know, I mean, I think I think those are probably the best options. Yeah, you yeah. know, uh, if if I have if I haven't thankfully you know I haven't had a large constrictor die in a long time years. Uh, hopefully I don't. But when I do, I think that like. I think I will probably get the, the like a, a bone structure. Yeah, you have to. I think it'd be sure. really cool. So, uh, so those are some of the things you can do. Um, uh, Stephanie says, been bin wa- binge watching old vlogs. Just out of curiosity, do you still have Laverne and Shirley preserved? Just thought it was cool. Yeah. I do. I do. As a matter of fact, in my office, we should show um, that. We haven't done that. In yeah, a while. yeah, cool. yeah. We could show it. Yeah, we do still have it preserved. That was a tough day, but thank you so much for watching and. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, you guys know two-headed snakes were uh, uh, something I was uh, really passionate about. I really wanted to have some a, a set of two-headed snakes here at the Reptarium, and thankfully Ben and Jerry have knock been on wood awesome, have been man. awesome. They've been doing great. They they're just fantastic. But uh, but it, you know, we we lost you know Cookies and Cream, Laverne and Shirley, and one other 
um, a, a Mexican Black King. We we lost. Oh wow, uh, that's crazy. Yeah, t- three sets of of two headed before we eventually got. And what I said was after the third set, which was uh, Cookies and Cream actually, but Cookies and Cream we didn't think was going to make it. I mean, it had some kinks and yeah. it, it 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 was doubtful. That was like what it was is that Grass you know just straws, to give you an idea, yeah. like baby two headed snakes typically cost about fifteen thousand dollars. Laverne and Shirley uh were it cost me fifteen thousand dollars. Cookies and Cream I bought for fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah, and so to me it was worth rolling the dice. I mean, not that fifteen hundred dollars is is chump change, but it was ten percent the cost of another one. So I thought, why not give it a go? And yeah. and, and and we did, and, and and it didn't work out. But um, Laverne and Shirley was the tougher one because it it, it they were eating, and uh, and they ate and just died. Uh, so after the three losses i literally was like i'm never buying a baby two-headed snake again and, and i still won't i will never buy another two-headed snake baby would i buy a yearling again absolutely i would buy another set for sure 100 percent for sure right now um and, and obviously you pay a lot more for yearlings start you know, that one, are, yeah. are well started um but yeah so we we, we still have laverne and shirley uh preserved um sharon says happy new year brian and jay happy new year happy new year to you sharon thank you so much for always being there for us um time with i think it's fiblian i don't know exactly how to pronounce it but let's call it time and uh time says uh my whole family loves the vlogs my blind daughter recognizes your voice from the other room and comes running to watch brian that's awesome also you have inspired my wife and i to breed false chameleons (gasps) We were just talking Ooh, we're about just talking that. about false chameleons, uh, really cool animals, and talking about how we'd like to get them. So if you breed them, let us know. We'd like to buy some captive ones. Tell your daughter I said thank you, and uh, and God bless you guys for this new year. Uh, Dane just threw a dollar for some love. What's up, Dane? Appreciate you. And uh, Hunter says, shit. Whoa. Meant podcast. It's going to be one thirty. Been yeah. a very long day. Thank you for helping me get through tough times on my second deployment. Oh man, well thank you for, for your, your service. service, man. You know, my my um my uh cousin is actually about to be deployed now for the eighth time. His wow, eighth, that's so crazy. Cuz that's a man. different breed, right? Cuz yeah. there's people that join the military, they go for 4 or 8 years, which even 8 years is a long time, you know. It is. But a lot of people go for 4, and then yeah. there's the people that are like career military. Yeah, and then, then there's people that are career military like him that keep getting deployed yeah, <laughs> you know that's I mean? crazy like, like and you you know that isn't like i mean that's that he he requests it you know yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. not like you can't be for i i don't i think you only can be forced, forced probably once, once right? i think um i'm not sure because i don't know enough about the military but um but yeah he's going for his eighth time and he goes into the shit i mean he goes into bad places you know he's he's <sighs> uh crazy. i can't he's like i think they call it i can't remember i never remember what they call it and he's like he's a, a navy guy but he's not a SEAL. He's special forces. He's the he's a medic, right? So he's a nurse uh, that goes out with like the SEAL teams and stuff That's like crazy. that. So he's a he, so he's not a SEAL, but he had to go through the SEAL training. Yeah, he had to go through all. He's the, hanging you know, with them. Yeah, yeah. He goes out with so a group of like twelve guys will go out into the bush for like two months by themselves. You know, with <laughs> like no backup, no anything. And he's the guy that is like the medic. You know, he's keeping them alive. The, he's the guy that when they get shot, he fixes them. And he also loses a lot of people too. He's he's. he's, he's <laughs> I, I, I know, mean, dude. Yeah, it's how it is, a lot dude. Of shit, man. He's that many it. deployments, you're definitely yeah. going to lose some friends. And he's always sure. going into and like this next one. He goes in like two weeks. Uh, he doesn't even know where he's gone. Has no clue. They don't. They don't because they can't. Yeah, they, they don't, don't want anyone don't knowing, him. right? They don't tell him. He just knows it's not going to be a nice place. <laughs> uh, but he doesn't care. I think he loves. I think he just. Loves some people it. live on that yeah. edge, you know. Yeah, I think that's what he likes. Uh, State forty eight says coming to see you twenty twenty one. Nice. I recently invested money into a herd. Of albino cicadas, I like that. Whoa! Wh- which could begin producing this year with revenue uh, received. Should I diversify? Any tips on growing YouTube? Uh, first off, that's awesome. When you get some baby albino cicada, I really like to get one. I know they are a little weak, a little bit tough, um, but they are super, super cool. The ones that do well do really well and, and are really cool. I think that um, I, you know, I think diver- so. It's interesting you say that. I think there's two real ways to go about things. I talked about Jeff Ronnie being very specific to one species that and niche. just doing it. You know, doing it. You know, really figuring it out. Right. You know, like I'm going to work with boas, or I'm going to work with salcad, or I'm going to work with whatever. Um, yeah, you can go that way. Become the expert. Just, just learn it, live it, love it, and be the best at it. Uh, or you can be diverse. I've always taken the diversification route. Not, not only. Uh, have I taken that route in my reptile company, 
but now I've taken that route in life, right? You know, I'm very diverse. I, I, I want lots of different income streams, different investments that have nothing to do with one another. Um, I want when that way when one thing goes down. So my point is, is that to me, and it's not that I'm saying what I feel, not what you, you should do, is I... I feel like, you know, okay, well, what if albino cicada, because they're a little bit touchy and, 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 and it is tough when they're maybe a $5,000 tortoise and you're going to have a percentage of them that aren't going to live, you know what I mean? And, and you're, you know, to be a good business person, if you sell that $5,000 tortoise and it dies, you're going to have to replace it. Right. So that's $10,000. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and so that's just b baked into that project. You know, you have to understand that. Uh, and, uh, uh, so, but what if all of a sudden one day people start, you know, hey, look at the spider gene in the ball pythons. It just took one uh, idiot to go out there and start saying that, you know, don't breed spiders, it's animal abuse. And, 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 and it caught on to the point where spider ball pythons became almost like, you know, if you were breeding them, you were, you know, the worst person on the planet. Uh, I'm not saying that's going to happen with the albino sulcata because it certainly didn't happen with albino iguanas, which have similar issues, right? They're, they don't see very well. They're sometimes a little bit weak and still people love albino iguana so i i would hope that wouldn't happen with the albino sulcata um and like i said i i personally would like to get get some albino sulcata but but i think diversification is probably a great idea if you want to stick with tortoises stick with tortoises you know i mean get, get into whether it's you know i mean obviously if you can produce aldalbras you know, you're always going to sell out Dalbros. Yeah, I mean? always. Uh, Galops, you know, the problem is with the permits. So it gets a little bit tricky and stuff like that, but it's still not a bad, you're going to sell every Galop, but you're going to make sure you're doing, you yeah, know. Legally. Yeah, legally, because, you know, that happened recently uh, in Arizona where a guy got his whole entire collection confiscated because uh, uh, they said he was breaking the law. I think he ended up winning that lawsuit against the government and, but by the time he got his tortoises back that were had been seized, I think like a third of them died wow. in, in, their, in the government's hands. Wow, thanks. So, you know, just think of all those things, you know what I mean? But but diversification, and as far as YouTube, just uh, listen, YouTube is a tough game, man. I ain't going to lie to you, man. It's 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 freaking doesn't it's a, make a lot of sense. It is a grind. It doesn't sure. make a lot of sense. You can do the same thing uh, a thousand times and get th a thousand different uh, results results and, and that's a very different difficult thing to live with but uh, but that doesn't mean you you, you you stop you just keep rolling and, yeah and, uh, yeah the biggest thing you've always taught me was just be consistent be consistent doesn't matter if you're yeah. doing one two three five days a week seven yeah. days a week but yeah. do that all the time yeah because as soon as you stop you know I, I, I again it goes back to what I was saying you never know when your success is going to hit I've, I've seen youtubers that have grinded for two or three years and with very minimal success and then all of a sudden just blow up yep just i know or blow up it's something that like my son noah is going through right now he changed his his thing a lot and he was getting you know 10 to twenty thousand views per video uh doing silly challenges and stuff like that he wasn't happy with that format he decided to change to a completely different way and 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 now he's getting maybe five thousand views a yeah. video and and i keep telling him you got to keep grinding because the thing i'm concerned about is that you know he might start to get that momentum again and then he gives up before he gets it done yeah. and i actually think that in his case you know i think his videos are much better now than they've ever been for I sure think, i think that if you look back on his challenges maybe they they reach more eyeballs but they weren't as good of videos now yeah. they're much more compelling, better storytelling, more interesting content. I think it's just a matter of time. And I think you should just do the same thing if you're into the YouTube is just keep on being passionate, tell the story, get involved. And, um, you know, I mean, it's like Gary V says, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk says, you know, it's, it really is social media is more about quality or quantity than quality. Yeah. Um, Quality is very subjective, right? You know, I mean, uh, some like, people like the like the less quality, the better. Yeah, some people want it to be as raw as could be. Other people want it to be, you know, Casey Neistat or P or Peter McKinnon. Yeah. Um, it just depends. So quality is is subjective. Uh, quantity, uh, and, and it's one of the things like you can put out a hundred videos, ninety nine of them may suck and do terrible, and then one of them pops and gets five million views, yeah. and it changes your life. And you that know? one that got five million views, you might have taken yeah. the least amount of time to work on, and it might be the crappiest video yeah, my out most, of all of them. Yeah, my most successful video on my vlog channel was a video I almost didn't shoot. That's right. Um, That's right. I literally was like, I don't think I want to shoot this. I shot it. And it turned out to get, you know, 28 million views. So, um, it, you know, so, it's just, so you just never know, you know. So Throw stuff grinding. at the wall. Yep. yep. Uh, the more the Mike's better. in the building. Mike's what's up. Happy uh, New Year, brother. He happy. said, uh, sup, guys. I hope your New Year is going well. Yeah. Any hook companies you like specifically? 
Got to get some. Uh, oh, okay. Snake hooks. Yeah, Got yeah. to Got to get some decent ones for my boas to get them trained better. Yeah, you know, it's really tough. Uh, I've worked with a lot of different hook companies, uh, and obviously the go-to has always been Midwest. Um, but they're, they're, you know, they do the same thing as everyone else does. And I don't know that there's really any, there's, I wish I'm so bad. There's that, you know, my favorite hook I've ever had was, uh, given to me by a company up in Canada. And Which I one is so it? Sorry. It's the wood one. Oh, that thing's bad. I love dude. it. I use it every, almost every, every time I grab a snake hook for a decent sized snake, I grab that. Yeah. That snake I hook. even too. Um, yeah. It's but cool unfortunately one. I can't remember the name of their company. So get back, Mike, I'll find it and I'll send it to you. But, uh, they're great guys up in Canada and, uh, but you know, a hook is a hook is a hook and um, yeah find something you, know, so you find like something you like and and you know i i don't i don't know that anyone's dominating that hook game you know <laughs> i mean i think uh maybe somebody should yeah that's... maybe someone needs to come out with something that's Ooh. really innovative mm. uh a cooper joe came back and said sorry should have been more specific it was a nile monitor okay now niles are a little bit difficult i'm not gonna lie to you man um they're they're touchy you know i mean they're it's hard to tame them i mean it's it's one of the harder varanids to tame out uh we've done it with abasuku uh chicken strip we've worked on and, and sh it's still not very 30 good, percent you know? if that and, yeah. yeah and and so uh you've got a, a little uphill battle you know the socialization part the actual animals do very well uh, make sure you have an extremely varied diet as babies and youngsters you want a lot of bugs not so much meat uh, and then you can slowly transition to more meat, but still giving bugs from time to time. Um, you got to remember these animals forage in the wild. You know, that's yep. what they do. They're constantly eating bugs, 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 bugs. And they don't really oftentimes get a rodent or a snake or a lizard or, or a rabbit or, 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 or you know, something, something like yeah. that. And so, um, so give them a lot of variety. But the, the socialization part is going to be your most difficult challenge. Uh, it can be done. It can be done, but you have to work very hard at it. Uh, Shane says, thank you again for my banana black pastel. Best oh. snake I've ever owned. He oh, loves his home and awesome. eats right out of my hand. Banger snake, too. Thanks, Shane. Do you know if it's that's, that's one of the real, real purple ones, yeah, right? It's one of my favorites. Yeah, it's you're one lucky, of my dude. Favorites. Yeah, no, I, I love them. They're so beautiful. Thank you for the support, too, with it. So, uh, yeah, definitely. Thank you so much, man. Caleb says, thanks for the tip. All right, man. Anytime, Appreciate brother. You. Anytime, dude. I'm here for you. Uh, and then Chelsea threw three dollars for Drogo snacks. Ah, Drogo snacks. We need it. That dang thing costs us a fortune. Uh, <laughs> that, dang, that dang one, one furry day, turkey. One one day he's gonna make us some money. Yeah, right dude, now that thing's costing so, us money. But, he's uh, so fucking. But funny. we love him. We, you know, I, I don't care if he'll ever make us money. I mean, I, it's 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 been a dream to have him. And uh, dude, I, I do you'll see him. footage. I was editing it just before yep. from when we did like the piece with Lori when she was doing the. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. you'll see it. I put I point the camera up, and Drogo oh, has his this, tongue out all the way. Yeah, with I love it when he yawns, man. It's so the cute. cutest thing in the world. Damn, son. Can we rail this in? <laughs>